Hello, everyone. So we are here today to go through a, an introductory demo of how you can actually leverage Power BI platform to do more than just your standard analytics. What do we mean by that? That's exactly what we will cover as part of this demo. What we have here today is a data set around retail and internet sales data for a company which operates in multiple different markets. What we are planning to do with Power BI today is an exercise where we take the sales data for the existing company and superimpose that with some third party data sets in the hope of exploring some new markets that they want to exp expand into. So let's see how we can basically do that. So what you're seeing here is the Power BI desktop platform which is actually the Power BI designer that all users will have access to. It is a completely free tool, which is one of the unique differentiators of the Power BI platform compared with its competitors. Um, Power BI is a very easy tool to learn and understand for any analyst. You can bring in data from multiple sources, link them together, mash them up, and then create your presentations, which derive interesting insights related to what you want to explore. So here, what I've created on the first tab is basically a sales overview of what the company sells. So as you can see, we have a couple of filters, a couple of different types of charts that have been included here. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can actually see that there is a, a scatter plot. But in this particular case, if you notice, the scatter plot is also slightly different in terms of how it's organized. Although it is a scatter plot, it also has some color coding, which I will actually get into in a second. So the first natural thing that companies would typically do is to basically go in and explore how their existing business is doing, whether that is related to the products that they sell, what are the different markets that they are selling into. And as you can notice, Power BI produces some interesting features around cross-filtering capabilities. So for instance, right now, I've actually clicked into bikes and I see that 2013 has been the year where most of my bike sales has happened. I can go click into one of the segments here and you'll automatically see how it filters out data from all of the other sections, right? So some of these features are very unique to a platform that allows you to quickly get to some insights which you would otherwise find much more complex using traditional reporting tools. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is the relevance of the section that I've built out on the right side. This actually pertains to some data that is actually collected through some third-party data sources. So if you notice on the right, I actually have average internet users per 100 and average GDP per capita. Both of these data sets are not inherent data sets to the company, but these are data sets that are actually sourced from third-party sources. Now, if you look at that, I have basically applied the information for the same five countries to basically look at how those countries align or stack up when you're looking at these third-party parameters. Now you can see that it's, it's created three interesting clusters. This is basically a clustering exercise leveraging one of the features in Power BI, where France is actually the lower part of the cluster, uh, which demonstrates less than 37K of average GDP and less than 60 users per 100 in internet usage. Then you have a different group up there for Germany, UK, and Canada, and then Australia that you see on the far right. The, the top clustering is being used with the objective of understanding the internet usage prevalence within that particular geography. Now, if you look at the section below, I have a different set of third-party parameters that I'm actually using. I have average population mapped to average GDP per capita again. Now, in this particular case, I'm just looking at the size of the population of the country and the actual per capita spend that's actually available to create an assessment regarding in the markets that I operate, how do those parameters play out and what kind of interesting groupings can I see, right? So I'm already combining two different data sets on page one, information from my existing sales and information pertaining to just third-party data sets available for that particular country. Now, if you basically go into the next tab, I'm actually doing one more further level of analysis here. So again, 
if you notice, I'm actually using some other interesting visuals that are again available as part of Power BI. So in this particular view that you see, I am using a word cloud uh, with a, a tabulated table on the right side. Now, if I wanted to basically go in and analyze what are some of the most popular products that are being used in a specific country, I can go click into that country and immediately the word cloud gives me certain trends of some of the most popular products that are actually being like this, you know, used there. Now, if I looked at the retail product sales up at the top, and if I wanted to basically go click into what I see for touring for France, I can instantly filter just on the touring items and the different products, the order quantities, reseller sales, etc. So this kind of gives me a very quick way to summarize or visualize the, the data sets pertaining to what I'm selling within a specific country. Now, these are all standard processes that you would basically use as part of your existing market analysis. However, one of the things to keep in mind is some of the visuals that you're seeing are very different from what you would typically have in a platform like Excel or elsewhere. So the fact, the aspect that the choice or the combination of the right kind of visualizations, in addition to features like cross-filtering, makes your data analysis much more powerful. Now, moving on to the next tab, we are also doing like further analysis. Now, this time, I'm actually doing an overlay of the actual sales data from my company with the third-party data that I've sourced from external sources. Now, if you look at this, I have six different parameters that I've chosen. I have total population, reseller sales impact, GDP, reseller impact on GDP per capita, internet usages, and reseller impact on inflation. Now, what I'm doing here is I have the data that I've collected from third-party sources uh, across multiple years uh, available for each of the countries. Now, I can select, again, a specific country that I want to do analysis on. So in this case, let's go pick up Canada. And you can actually see that you have the data for Canada across multiple years. And I have now superimposed my sales data from my company on top of the third-party data set here. This is extremely powerful because now you can actually see how your company's sales had any kind of impact related with the third-party influencers that were basically happening. Unemployment rate is a great example. Now, you are actually trying to see in, in a country like Canada, like, I mean, did the unemployment rate in Canada have anything to do with how your sales basically performed, right? Or you can basically look at the actual GDP per capita spend uh, for the country across those different years and your operating years uh, in those country for those years to determine how much of an impact on your revenue is affected by the GDP per capita spend overall. So these are, again, interesting ways for you to be able to do and understand your existing markets, which you would otherwise have had an ability to do in a much more primitive way. Now, I can always go filter for a specific year and like instantly visualize just the data for that year across the different sections as well. Now, armed with the information from all of these sections, we can now get into the new market discovery. Now, just as an example here, what I'm showing is I'm now no longer looking at my existing sales data, but I'm just purely looking at just countries that fell into the same kind of classification based on our clustering exercises from tab one. So in this case, I've excluded the markets in which I currently operate. And I've basically set up my cluster to look at the same set of parameters with respect to the average internet usage population and GDP per capita. And filtering out for rest of the countries that I have in my list to see which of those countries actually fall into the same parameters. Why do I do this? This is because I already know based on the information of the countries that I operate in and also based on analysis that I've done based on third party data sets, like I have a better feel for what my market looks like and how I my potential products may operate in similarly fitting markets. So again, it's not a black and white decision, but it's it but it's something that allows me to make a better judgment in terms of where should I be spending my money more wisely, you know, for looking at new markets, right? So that is where this information becomes really powerful. Again, you can now see that there are a whole set of different markets that it basically pulls up. 
it shows that there are potentially different markets for your internet sales channel and retail sales channel in some cases there are overlaps and it also shows you how they're segmented and aligned with respect to how your existing markets operate so it is fair to assume based on the information that you see that countries like andorra uae and belgium fall back into the same category as what france is so potentially you can start doing more deeper explorations with your insights from france as to how you could potentially influence your product sales in these markets as well again all of the the same aspects that we talked about before are still relevant you'll be able to filter for specific countries go look at additional parameters and attributes uh, to do deeper exploration there and then finally you can get to the new market analysis based on the the countries that you shortlisted uh, now as you can see my third party data sets are no longer filtered by year but i'm actually filtering them for specific countries and you have an opportunity to now go do your more deeper analysis now at a very high level looking at this data set it's very easy to say that one of the markets that i would potentially want to explore deeper is japan because japan has a decent population fairly low unemployment rate like fairly higher gdp per capita spend in, and also meets some of the criteria or quadrants that falls into my clustering analysis component as well so hopefully this gives you a good understanding of how power bi as a platform is not just a visualization tool but is also a fantastic mashup tool to bring up your retail sales and your third party data sets together to garner some insights which you would have otherwise found a lot more complex to look and evaluate so hopefully this was a useful session for you and this is something that you can leverage for your own internal sales analysis purposes as well. Thank you.